Yemen. Thanks for joining us, Abdul. Glad to have you. Yours is a country that you. barely makes it into our headlines, except when something nasty happens to like Americans, like the Christmas um, Day foiled uh, bomb attack over uh, Detroit. Bring us up to date very briefly um, on what you in Yemen are covering day by day. What are the social stresses there right now? And where do you think the breaking points might be? Yemen has been facing severe economic uh, problems compounded by corruption for a number of years now. That was even made worse by a war in the, in the north that has been going on for five years. And uh, it is uh, a war of choice. It, there's no reason for that war to continue. Then add another layer of uh, complications with uh, civil unrest and widespread protests in the south that have been going on for three years, by, uh, started by military men uh, who were demanding their pensions, uh, then were joined by various groups with different uh, grievances that had to do with the marginalization by the central government of the people of the south. So the situation is without al-Qaeda, is already very critical. Talk about now, the distinctions. Uh, what, what's, what, what sets the South apart? We hear a lot about tribal differences, um, economic questions. What makes the South different? The South joined the North in 1990 in, uh, in unified Yemen. Before then, the South had uh, at least 150 years of separate history. Uh, first, it was uh, the colony of Aden was occupied by the British for over 130 years. And then uh, when, this, when Aden colony uh, and the, the southern uh, part gained independence from, from the uh, British in 1967, they had their own republic, which was socialist and Marxist. So there's quite a distinction between northern and southern. With respect to what's happening right now, Abdul, and to help begin our conversation that will continue after you have to leave us, um, as you watch the U.S. response to this most recent foiled uh, airplane attack, um, what are your concerns? What are your worries? My worries is that things tend to go wrong when we have military campaigns that are uh, that looked neat uh, in the uh, in the uh, memos of the strategic planners, but then are complicated by all kinds of unforeseen circumstances when they are implemented. Now, I'm not concerned of uh, I'm not worried that uh, uh, an American ground troop deployment may take place in Yemen. That's out of the question. Uh, it is uh, it is almost impossible for the people of Yemen to accept ground troops uh, from the U.S. Uh, and there's no need by, by the government uh, of Yemen to have military assistance of that nature. Uh, the Yemeni government could benefit from training and uh, intelligence. Let me just interrupt you for a minute there. You said that Yemen doesn't need military assistance from the United States. But just last month, we saw the U.S. embassy shut down, citing security concerns. There does seem to be a level of insecurity that has to be addressed. The Yemeni government is quite capable uh, to uh, meet the challenge of al-Qaeda by, its, by itself and with its own resources. Uh, however, it is now sidetracked by uh, an unnecessary war of choice in Sada, which, by the way, uh, is now winding down and hopefully will be over in, uh, in a few days, and is also sidetracked by the security uh, requirements of keeping uh, an unhappy population in the south. Now, if the government resolves the problem in the south and the problem in the north, it has more than enough uh, to be able to uh, fight al-Qaeda on its own. It may need training and intelligence support, but the introduction of foreign troops 
or even the bombing by foreign forces uh, causes a spike in the recruitment to Al-Qaeda. And uh, this can be an endless cycle. Let me just get you to respond straight on to a piece that appears in today's New York Times, Tuesday's New York Times, which basically describes the ruling family as in disarray. Is that a fair, unfair characterization? Uh, they are. It's the, the characterization of them as family uh, is, uh, is inaccurate. They are a clan, and the clan is in disarray, has been in disarray for a number of years. And many of the conflicts and uh, complications taking place in Yemen uh, have been a reflection of that, uh, of that disarray. So they don't need help? It, it, it has been... Uh, the, the, the complications that Yemen, some of the complications Yemen faces now have been a, a product of that disagreement of the rival, rivalry within the ruling elite. So the argument being made here is we need to help them. U.S. intervention is necessary. Maybe not, as you say, troops on the ground, but we have drones in the sky. Well, that could be uh, useful for intelligence purposes, but uh, I, I believe that Every time American forces strike in Yemen, there will be a spike of recruitment. And uh, as, I, uh, as I have said before, each terrorist that they kill breeds 5.7 terrorists. <laughs> the, there's no point. Uh, this is an endless cycle. Thank you so much. That was Abdul Ghani Al-Iriani joining us from Yemen.